Hey guys, so I named my audio amplifiers subwoofer as Owfer. Get it? Uh, woofer? Can, can you imagine having to howl, starting a howl just to say that name? <laughs> It's wolf teamed. And, and there's fur, there's howls. You get it. There's a speed pain coming up, followed by a review and how I made this amplifier. Cody's coat color is off! It's hard to find paint with his unique shape, and I didn't plan to add him. A subwoofer is a speaker that produces low-pitched audio frequencies. Adding a subwoofer is one of the most powerful upgrades you can make to your audio system. This subwoofer also houses its own amplifier circuitry, which is common for desktop speakers, and it keeps it compact. It also provides amplified output for a pair of left and right satellite speakers. A good subwoofer requires power from the amplifier. This powerful amplifier and subwoofer adds dimension, impact, and 
adapt to any audio, including voice. I listened. Drum beats felt like they were actually there. It was a whole new experience for the same songs. I found a subwoofer housing box from the trash. No, I'm not a dog sniffing out neighborhood trash. Its subwoofer driver was missing. Someone probably got to it first. Grr. And the analog amplifying circuitry was finicky, ran inefficiently hot, and has low output power. So I ordered one with much better specs and quality with Bluetooth 5. By investing less than 20 US dollars, including shipping from China, you can probably get it from Amazon. This chip is pretty popular. On this amplifier board, the achievable volume and sound quality easily beats any pre-assembled Bluetooth speaker that is less than $100. I love how many control options I have with this amplifier board. Just look at all the knots. Oh no, gosh, Cody, look at all the knobs. Aside from being able to control the amount of treble and bass, I get to control the cutoff frequency of the bass. This means I can choose to produce only bass with very low frequency or allow a wider bass band. Having separate volume controls for the left and right audio outputs allows me to connect different types of satellite speakers and balance them together with my subwoofer. The amount of control you can have with a single push button blew me away. No, I'm still here, not blown away. I may be lightweight, but wait, why am I even explaining? The functions went beyond what the product page specified. There are two modes, Bluetooth and auxiliary input. There's not much you can control while in aux, except powering it off or on and switching over to Bluetooth. If you haven't figured out what long and double that I've written on each side means, it is short for long press and double press. In Bluetooth mode, pressing the button once is used for play or pause. You can also turn the bass completely off. And for those watching this video without a subwoofer, you wouldn't hear much difference. It automatically turns off after a while when no device is connected. So a single press also powers it back on. While a song is playing, a long press brings you to the previous song. And depending on the player and how far into the song you're at, it brings you back to the start of the song. Double pressing takes you to the next song. When on pause, Long pressing disconnects the existing Bluetooth connection and instantly initiates pairing mode. Long pressing it again while in pairing mode turns it off. Or you can switch to AUX by single pressing. Oh, and it does this creepy voice that literally speaks line in whenever you switch to AUX. The original amplifier had its subwoofer driver hidden inside, and I had a much larger one lying around. So I drilled 39 holes to make a larger one on one side. The box clearly needed a fresh coat of paint, so I disassembled, cleaned, and spray painted each part separately. To utilize the volume knob and LED indicator on the front panel, I connected control wires out from the amplifier board. I also added a push button to the knob. I took apart and embedded a laptop's power brick for power. Yes, the power brick was from another pile of trash. The AC pins were broken, but otherwise functional, and I didn't need those pins. I made sure to seal off any gaps and holes to prevent the subwoofer-driven air from escaping, except through the open port on the front. This pain in the butt took me three weeks to renew and put together, but it was well worth it. I can now make objects shudder under the mic of my woofer. <laughs> oh gosh. You know how humans get spooked when they hear a howl in the middle of a deserted and eerie forest? Yeah. I mean, look at all that serious vibration. Overall, this amplifier and subwoofer is impressive for its cost. It provides rich, noise-free amplification and is powerful enough to boost those very soft-sounding YouTube videos. I was genuinely afraid of blowing the subwoofer's diaphragm while stress testing it, but that didn't happen. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth lag is real. I started editing this video connected via Bluetooth, but I had to switch to AUX and readjust all my timings, so I do need that AUX input for games. Otherwise, having Bluetooth for casual listening is neat. 
movie players as well as YouTube does lag compensation, so you would not be able to experience lag on audio latency test videos on YouTube. I tried. Nuh-uh.